this could be controversial. I actually really love Tyler Perry's Baxter Stockman chat. Uh, 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 wow. Yeah. <laughs> From Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, the, the second Michael Bay movie. I actually thought he was really, he's the only good thing about that movie. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video and i want to go ahead and review teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem and again for those that don't know uh this film obviously is is uh, the recent interpretation of the teenage mutant ninja turtles and after years of being sheltered from the human world from you know by their father uh the turtle brothers uh set out to win the hearts of uh, many new yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers uh by taking on the villainous superfly with aspiring journalist april o'neill now, before jumping into uh, the film itself, Chad, which I recently just saw again, thank you so much, uh, Vanny, um, uh, for joining me on our, on our uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, watch. Um, I did want to just kind of share my thoughts on, on TMNT in general, just the, the entire franchise, which, you know, I think a lot of people, their first exposure was the cartoon, but for those that don't know, you know, originally started out as a, as a, as a comic book, Chad, more of a parody of, of, of Daredevil. Uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil to be more specific and it was actually you know kind of dark and gritty and things and you know of course the 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 ooze that blinded Daredevil is the same ooze you know that created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles instead of fighting the hand like Daredevil they fight the Foot Clan led by you know by the Shredder and I've actually uh, read I've actually you know read some of those some of those comic books I haven't, I haven't read the the, the entire uh, uh, series, but when I but when I read, I was like, oh, it's actually uh, pretty cool. Especially being you know, like you know a really big uh, Daredevil fan, I saw what they were kind of parodying and making fun of and, and indulging, right? And um, outside of that, like I have been exposed to some other things, uh, other parts of the franchise. You know, I, I never really grew up watching uh, the original '80s and into the '90s TMNT cartoon. Uh, I have done a few episode reviews, you know, since since that time, like you know, obviously doing my streams and my content creation. And I like what I saw. I just, I just wasn't a big 80s cartoon guy, Jam. Jam and the Hologram is still my, still my uh, absolute favorite. Later on, you know, I did watch some of the other cartoons. I, the, the most recent TMNT cartoon that I actually watched, you know, con on a consistent basis was probably the 2003 series, uh, which I actually quite like. I don't know if I watched all of it, but what I saw, I, I really enjoyed. And I seen clips of, like, the CGR cartoon on Nickelodeon, and they recently did, like, a new cartoon where they kind of really played with the animation styles and made the turtles, like, different types of turtles. I, th I thought it was actually really cool. I like the look of that show quite a bit. I know they kind of wrapped all, all up that entire series like in its own TV film, which I heard was actually really, really good. So I might want to check that out one day. In terms of the films, you know, I, I saw the, the 90s movie like only a couple of years ago, Chat, the, the original one. I actually quite liked it. You know, it, you know, I know that for, you know, that was one of the most successful films of the, of the early 90s. I think at the time it was the most successful, like it was still like an, an independent production and it did really well, certainly uh, commercially. But I liked the heart. It had, it had a lot of heart uh, to it, Chat. And so that was that. That was actually pretty nice. And I think I've seen a little bit of, of the, the, the sequel, which is what, Te Te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Secret of the Ooze, you know, and then you had, what, Vanilla Eyes, go Ninja, go Ninja, go, and all that. Like, I've seen that video. And then I saw the third one uh, at a Pizza Hut when I was, like, maybe, it's funny, that was actually the first of the live action films I saw. I saw that at a Pizza Hut when I was, like, maybe 10 years old with, like, no audio. It was just, like, it was just, you know, subtitled. <laughs> when they go back in time, like, this, this movie's kind of bad. <laughs> this movie's, this movie, he's in his kids, like, this movie sucks. He's not a fan. Ne never saw the mid-2000s, was, like, 2006, 2007, CGI, 3D, animated Turtles movies, but I know it has its fans. I know a lot of people actually really, really enjoyed that particular uh, movie. Uh, and then I saw the Michael Bay films, or I guess, I know I don't know if he directed, I forget if he directed them, but the, the Michael Bay produced TMNT movies, and I thought those were pretty bad. Uh, and so, yeah, that what's, what brings us to this particular uh, film chat, you know? And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, you know, despite not being like, you know, a, a TMNT 
uh, super fan, like so many people of my age, you know, I was actually really looking forward uh, to the film. I think the, the marketing has been very good. And I was just really digging, like, all the trailers and all the little clips they were putting out. You know, especially just, you know, just the overall look of the movie, which to me is just reminiscent of a lot of recent 2.5D animated films. You know, like the, the Spider-Verse series or Mitchells versus the Machines. You know, and again, having finally watched it, I can definitely say uh, out of all the TMNT content that I've, that I've consumed, you know, this is definitely, I think, one of the best adaptations of, of the of the property chat and listen I, I'm well aware that, that that this movie is taking a, just a lot of liberties uh, with the established lore you know in, introducing the comic and and certainly the the original 80s 90s uh, animated series but I, I personally found that especially refreshing you know like right off the bat you know the thing that makes this such a fresh interpretation is the art style uh, the, the, it's it's you know long of taking inspiration from a lot of you know recent 2.5 D animated movies. I I I I love how asymmetrical and kind of sometimes ugly uh, this this world looks. And I and I mean that in, in in the best way possible, Chad. Like I like that you say like oh the movie looks ugly, but it, it, in actually in a good way because it's something that we don't often see in a lot of certainly a lot of theatrically released animated movies. Again, you know, for the last, I would say nearly, I mean, at this point, she had 30 years and there's exceptions, you know, we get some 2D animated movies like from Studio Ghibli. But for the most time, most of the time, it's been kind of that 3D uh, animation similar to what, you know, Pixar, what Pixar popularized with like the original Toy Story and, you know, what DreamWorks has used and, and all, many other animation studios that are their, their contemporaries. But, you know, the designs I think are, are, are really good. Um, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, so, so much of like, of the, of the, of the character designs in this movie are kind of grotesque. Like surprisingly, the, like the most normal looking <laughs> people in the movie are actually the, the Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. And I, I really like the design for each specific uh, turtle. You know, I think, you know, back to the, you know, the cartoon, you know, the turtles, they all, they all pretty much look the same. They might've maybe changed the skin color to a degree. I can, they've kind of done that in other, you know, adaptations, but you know, Leonardo, he wears the, he's the, he has a blue bandana and, you know, and, and, and mask. Raphael's the red, Michelangelo's the orange and, and then Donatello's the purple. That's really it. But I, I like their, their designs, you know, like Leonardo, he's more, he's, he's, he's slimmer, but he's, he's definitely muscular. Raphael, he's like, he's, you know, big and bulky, you know, Donatello, he's, since he's the, the more, he's the most intelligent of the turtles. He's the most, you know, kind of tech based. He's, he's got these big, you know, glasses on and, you know, and, you know, Michelangelo, he's, uh, well, he's just, you know, he's, he's the, he's the smallest out of all of them. And, but he, just he has the heart chat you know he's he's a fast talker and so i kind of like the just the overall designs of the turtles in this in this movie also we see them as babies i don't know if you guys have seen any of the clips but you know they have a lot of footage of them as babies in the movie they are adorable <laughs> they are so cute they are the definition chat of derpy babies they are the cutest derpy derpy eyed walled eyed babies you ever seen just bumping into each other falling down going yeah it's like all that I thought was just infinitely charming in, in the film. I like the design for Splinter where, you know, we originally see him as a rat. Then he kind of grows into like a kind of like late 30s, you know, early 40s, middle-aged dad rat. I thought that was pretty cool. And like his aesthetic changes until he's like, you know, the old man that we often see in a lot of different adaptation interpretations of, 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 of the turtles. I thought that was really cool. And then you have like all the designs for the different mutants chat. I mean – they played around with so many different creatures, you know, from like, you know, a, a giant fly, rhinoceros, pig, uh, a, a cockroach. Um, you even have like a, a, a bat creature of a crocodile woman. Like all that was was really cool and really inspired. And also like the humans. The thing is, like, honestly, like the humans are just as grotesque as the mutants. It's so funny because one of the big plot points is oh, the turtles don't feel accepted. They want to be accepted because you know, uh, by, by humanity in general, but because they're mutants, they, they, they feel like they can never be. But the thing is, like, the humans look as grotesque as anything else. <laughs> it's feel like everything's asymmetrical. Everyone, everything's lumpy. Everyone looks like they are just filled with tumors. It's just like, I think you can fit in very, very easily. But still, 
I, I, I like just the, the asymmetrical designs in this movie for all the characters. I can see maybe it won't appeal to everybody. People like maybe are more used to like the traditional 3D look and where it's not as grotesque. But as someone who has just been yearning for different types of theatrical, you know, animation, this was just a huge brush, a, a, a breath of fresh air. I, I loved it. Lo loved the look. Also, the film's use of color. The color palette in this movie is very diverse, very, very diverse. Yeah, I mean, you have you have everything from you know uh, green ooze, you know rich greens, a lot of lot of neon green in this movie. Uh, beautiful uses of 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 orange and blue, Let's just, and just there's neon in general. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit of a sucker for neon. Yeah, I kind of like that '80s aesthetic look, and it suits this movie very, very. Like even immediately how it opens. Like we're in a, like uh, the back of vehicles and it's kind of all layered of neon and we're later on we're in a basement that's all like you know illuminated by like you know green ooze I'm just like oh man I'm already loving the the the, the look of this of this movie. Um, the other thing that I think immediately stands out about the film is the is the, is the voice cast and the voice acting. It's like yes you have you have great performances you know from the entire cast but the the big standouts are are the four leads. Now I think I'm not too familiar with these 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 young voice actors chap. I want to give them a shout out. We have uh, Nicholas Cantu, uh Brady Noon, uh Mika Abbey and Shaman Brown Jr. who play Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello and Michelangelo uh, uh, Michelangelo respectively. And uh I think all of them are are great, you know. Uh, they have just such chemistry with each other, and I think it was very smart on the point of the filmmakers where, you know, for so often, Chad, not always the case, but so often, like, people do their voice acting kind of isolated in their own booths, and, they, and, and no one's, like, together. Um, but I think they made a point to actually have the four of them always recording with, with each other. And I think that that just added so much to their performance, you know, where they actually, for the, they, they felt like, like brothers and I got a, like an instant sense of camaraderie and, and, and chemistry and, and friction in certain places. Like I really, really liked their interactions in the movie and the, and the performances I thought were very good, you know, I, and again, I think for the first time ever, uh, this is another thing. This has always been kind of a, a criticism I've had and, um, I like that really for the first time ever. The turtles actually sound and act like teenagers. You know, in so many adaptations uh, and in, in various interpretations, they always, always came across like adults to me, mostly because you had adults voicing them, you know, and because of their quirks and their insecurities. And, and, and again, the actors' chemistry with, with one another, they actually feel like teens. And the fact that they actually are kids, they actually are teenagers. And that immediately comes across, like even in the first scene, when they're, when they're, you know, going off on a mission, you know, an assignment to go grocery shopping. I, um, I, I like that. I like that with them. And then you have, you know, Jackie Chan as Splinter, who I think does a really good job. Um, I really enjoyed him in the movie. I was actually curious about, like, okay, let's see what he has. You know, famously, uh, I remember, like, uh, something like the Jackie Chan Adventure. Remember that show? And it wasn't actually Jackie Chan voicing the character. <laughs> but here, I thought he did, a, he did a really good job. And again, you know, obviously English is not his second language, but I kind of felt that kind of added, you know, to, to the character. You know, because it's like a rat trying to figure it out English. And I, I, I really like that. I thought he had a good cadence in the movie. Uh, you have Ao uh, Etabar, I think that's how you say her name. She plays April O'Neil. Uh, I, I know there's like a lot of backlash against the character because she's black and you know, but I'm like, I don't care. They pulled Neil's been different races and different adaptations and interpretations. I think what she's been Latino, she's been white, she's been black. I'm just like, I don't care. Um, her performance I thought was very, very funny. There's a great gag with her in the movie that I did not expect at all. And it's like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to the humor. We'll get to the humor in the movie. We'll get to some of the, um, gags. Uh, consistent gags in the film but what they do with her I thought uh, really worked and I like that you know again she's she's not completely altruistic you know she has her own kind of self like everyone kind of has their own selfish motivations and you know and, and you know gets them to the a point of conflict later on in the movie and you know she's trying to be a journalist but she's dealing with her own many insecurities chat and and her relationship with the turtles kind of changes throughout the film but I, I kind of liked it. it I you know it was it was something different it was something that that at least for what I have you know in terms of what I consumed of TMNT I was like oh this is a this is a new interpretation of the character and I, again I thought it was kind of refreshing and then you have, briefly in the movie, uh, Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman. I'm a huge Bax Baxter Stockman fan, chat. You know, love him. I mean, my, my <laughs> I, 
think to this day, this is going to be controversial. I actually really love Tyler Perry's Baxter Stockman chat. Uh, 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 wow. Yeah. <laughs> From Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, the, the second Michael Bay movie. I actually thought he was really, he's the only good thing about that movie. But, but I, for, 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 the, for the bit of screen time that, that Gene Carlos Esposito had, I actually liked him. And you know what? They made me kind of feel sad for the character. Where in all of the various adaptation interpretations of Baxter Stockman, I kind of never really felt bad for him because he like kind of brought it on himself, you know, <laughs> all the all the all the horrible things that eventually happened to him, all the body horror. But here he's kind of a tragic figure, and I really really like that. And and you find out what his motivation is very early on. I thought it was kind of sweet. That was actually very, very sweet. And so I really dug that motivation quite a bit. And then you have like a, a, a ton of other voice actors, Chad. Everyone from, you know, like Maya Rudolph, um, who plays like a, 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 another bad guy who's another player who's not related to Superfly, but it's like this evil corporation or agency. I don't know if it's corporation or government agency, but they're trying to get all the mutants and create super weapons, right? Seth Rogen, of course, is there, and John Cena, and, you know, they, they play like. Um, uh, Bebop and Rocksteady, uh, you know, Rose Byrne plays like, I, I didn't even realize it was Rose Byrne for, uh, first, it was, she plays like a crocodile woman, you know, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd, who plays this guy named what, Mondo Gecko, I think that's his name, very funny character, I, I really enjoyed him in the movie, it's funny, uh, kind of, um, actually, no, I'll save it to the end, they, they do something really funny with him in the end credits, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, why you, why, why you do him like that, but I actually uh, quite liked it, you know, the, out of all the, outside of, um, you know, the, the Turtle, the Turtle Brothers. Like, I thought, like, one of the other best performances in the movie was actually Ice Cube as, as Superfly. He's a really good villain. And Ice Cube's voice acting of him, I thought, was kind of perfect. You know, he honestly sounded like he was just having a ton of fun voicing the character. And the thing is, like, I was even surprised. I, now, I think this movie is PG. Because at times, I'm like, is this PG or is this PG-13? Because he gets some very dark, very adult moments in the movie. And he's like the one, he swears a lot in the film. You know, I mean, again, you know, like swear, but like, you know, he says damn. And like, I was like, wow, we can, we can say damn and just in a PG movie? Is that a thing? And I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, he, he did that kind of consistently. And yeah, he does reference NWA and things in some of his uh, raps. But actually, he kind of fit in the movie. I don't know. I was, I was really... I was really taken aback by his performance. He, he has a lot of charisma in, in the film. And, you know, I liked his motivation, and, and, uh, and he's scary. He does, some, he does some pretty gross, nefarious stuff in, in the film. Uh, also, uh, you know, moving on from just the, you know, the voice acting, you know, all the action choreography I think is excellent. It's some of the best I've ever seen from TMNT, certainly animated. Uh, they they really went crazy with it. You know, you, you go from kind of like a dirty chop shop, you know, fight to a battle with, you know, the m many mutants. And then later on to like a battle with a kaiju creature. And despite like that escalation, it's like, oh, it's gonna get more ridiculous. And it's not gonna, you're not, it'll be, it'll be overwhelming. Like all the animation and fight scenes, I thought were spectacular and well choreographed. You know exactly what's happening. It's not like, you know, uh, for example, the Michael Bay produced team and team movies where I was just like, I can't even see what's happening on screen. You know, like these, these are just so well edited and how they have like all the brothers fighting along, along with, you know, all the mutants fighting and, and then with the kaiju battle and then even like fighting other humans. I thought, ah, this is like really, really cool. Um, I, 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 there's not a single week action scene in this film. They do a lot of cool, like I'm usually I'm like, ah, oh, action montage is like, whatever, you know, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. They do a really excellent action, uh, action montage in this film and, uh, how they do the voice acting between all that I thought was uh, pretty, pretty clever, pretty clever. Now, uh, also, also, I forgot to say, before I get to kind of my criticism of the movie, the score, I didn't know who did the score for the movie. The score is by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. And it is one of the best scores of the year. At no question about it, Chad. It has a lot of just ambient sounds and synth. And it, it comes across, and again, it's perfect for this movie, just surprisingly weird and dark at times. And, but, but it, again, it didn't matches the aesthetic of the world very well. It also has, like, a, a great soundtrack. You know, they, they do use some songs that have definitely been memed and things like, you know, What's Up by the Four Non Blondes. But it, in the context of the scene and the film, it actually is quite funny, and I, I, really, I really liked it for that. So, uh, yeah, so the scoring soundtrack is, is stellar.
is very, very, very good. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of score. I'm like, I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't mind owning that. <laughs> I would actually like to buy it. You know, uh, now I I do have I do have some criticisms of 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 the film. You know, the it it is it is the kind of movie that likes to make pop culture references. You know, quite often, and that can be irritating at times. Um, like they mention everyone from God, Ariana Grande to to Drake to all different types of actors, and and sometimes it's like, well, this is going to be very dated, like even by today. <laughs> it's like, well, it was the movie literally came out on Friday night, and now it's Saturday. It's like that is already very very dated. You know, it's barely been out for like a week, only been out for three days. It's like, uh, but Vanny actually had a good point. He had a very good point about this particular uh, the. Uh, the moment of the movie or just you know parts of the film where he's like well to be fair this is probably how the brothers would talk you know they would make these references you know because they do the thing is about the turtles like they're not isolated from the from the world like they go out but they also have technology they're they have their own phones they have access to the internet they're on the computer they play video games they watch movies often you know it's actually a, a moment in the film when they when they actually do that and it's like that that that's a good point and they and they would probably talk that way right but i think it's just like there's sometimes where it, it it felt like authentic and it worked for me. All the time, it's like, eh, I don't really need that. But but that's that's definitely going to be a part of the movie where people are going to get either annoyed by or just kind of go with it. And I was I was kind of half and half with it, uh, honestly. And the other part of it is, Chad. I mean, again, humor subjective, but like some of the jokes just uh, didn't land for me. Sometimes they were funny and sometimes they weren't. Like I was chuckling. I was definitely chuckling. It was not like um, there was not too many moments where I was like, ah, oh, like laughing really hard. You know, there's like a couple moments that I, I, you know, I definitely laughed, you know, but there's this one joke. There's definitely this one joke where I'm curious how people are going to land on it, where it's, it involves milking. <laughs> it involves milking, Chad. I'm not going to say any more than that, but uh, it's either going to work for you because they mention a lot or it's going to get an annoying for you. Uh, I think how they kind of wrapped up the joke, I was like, okay, that was kind of funny. <laughs> Um, but, but I could see other people going like, I'm just, this is not working for me, but, uh, but that's really just, just like the, the two main criticisms that, that I have for the film itself. Other than that, I, th I think, you know, most will be really entertained by this movie. It, it does a lot of new things, uh, with, with the franchise. And puts the turtles in, and I think the supporting characters in an interesting place, you know, for, for a sequel, which they definitely set up. Uh, by the end of the mid credit scene uh, and, and slash stinger. Like there, I don't know if there's like a very end stinger at the very end of the movie chat, but there is a mid credit sting, uh, which I actually thought was pretty cool. Um, and it almost kind of felt a little slice of life, which I thought was nice. And then there's like a thing where people are going like, well, what about this character? Is this character in it? I'm like, I'm not going to say who it is, but yes. And, but you got you to gotta be there for the, the mid credit uh, stinger chat is, is all I'll say, all I say, but yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie, and I was very satisfied uh, with the chat. I'm actually looking for, I know Paramount, Vanny told me that they were going to let a sequel. I, I guess they're going to do a TV series uh, to chat, so I'm kind of interested. I wonder if that's going to be more, well, I don't want to say what it is, because that would be a spoiler. But I'm curious what that TV show is going to be like. But I am looking forward uh, to the sequel chat. I, 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 um, yeah, I think this is just, I mean, they're doing so much of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles right now. I mean, for years. I, I, I guess the franchise has always been in the pop culture zeitgeist. You know, mostly on television, obviously, but also in comics, too, and crossover. I remember back in the day, cross I forgot to mention this, crossed over with, like, Power Rangers, but Space Rangers. I remember that. And they had the female turtle there. Um, but, yeah, so much about this this movie uh, really worked for me. I thought it was was great. And I, I just, the art style to the, the voice acting, especially with the, the four brothers, Ice Cube, and the, the music. The music, I thought, was very, very good. So, uh, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how I feel about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But what about you out there? What did you think about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem? Did you, did you like it as much as, as I did? Were you not a big fan? Are you a fan of the, of the property just in general over the nearly, what, 40 years that it's been in existence? You know, let me know. Appreciate it. And feel free to give feedback at any time. Thank you again for watching the video and see you next time.